Hey guys, welcome to the UV unwrapping and UV mapping tutorial for Blender. In this video, we're going to talk about what UV unwrapping is, what UV mapping is, and how to do it. So the best way I can describe UV unwrapping is like if you took an object and you skinned it, and then you unraveled it onto a table in front of you. Once you flatten it onto a 2D plane, that 2D representation of a 3D object is what you're going to use to then UV map an image texture onto the surface of your 3D object, which means that you can basically unwrap it, color it, and then wrap it back up. So that's the basic process of how UV mapping and unwrapping works. So let's just go ahead and jump into how to do it in Blender. I'm going to go ahead and first things first, create a new panel which is by dragging this up. I'm going to go ahead and change this one to UV slash image editor. And that will bring us to this sort of empty image here, which is actually our render result, which is not what we want. It's currently the only image that we have in our file. If we have it on render result, you won't be able to see our UV. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this X button, which won't affect it. It'll still be there, but it just won't be selected. And then now that we have that there, I'm going to go into my 3D viewport here, take our default cube and go into edit mode. And usually, if there is already a UV map for this object, it would show up highlighted in this window. And you'll see that in a second after we unwrap it. So the fact that there isn't anything here means that it hasn't been unwrapped yet. So let's just go ahead and click the hotkey for unwrapping, which is U for UV or U for unwrap. And you have a few options here. Every single one of these has to do with creating a UV map via unwrapping. So the way you unwrap it is up to you. The very basic way of unwrapping it is using the unwrap option, which doesn't do anything crazy. It just sort of does what Blender thinks is the easiest way to unwrap it. Smart UV project is actually really, really helpful. I personally prefer this one for a lot of very quick and dirty unwraps. And then you have a few others like cube projection or a sphere projection for spheres, cylinder projection. Project from view is basically where you take what you're seeing right now and you project it onto a 2D plane as if you flatten your current image. Now let's go ahead and just try the most basic one, which is unwrap. And you can see here, it just basically, it's very jumbled. Everything's sort of just the same. It's grouped together. These are actually six different squares just stacked on top of each other, which means that if we were to do anything, every single face of the cube would have the same design. So just for the sake of testing, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new texture here. And I'm gonna name it UV test or whatever you want, really. I'm going to change it to 2048 by 2048, just because I feel like it. And then instead of blank, I'm going to go ahead and select UV grid. And then I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see here, we have this very complex UV grid now. Now if we go to our textured mode here, which is with Alt-Z, or you can go here, go to texture. And you'll notice nothing actually happens. We have textured mode on. We don't see the UV squares anywhere. You know, if we zoom in, there's there's nothing there. So in order to see our textures, we need to apply the texture to the material. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Go to material, create a new material, just keep it at the fuse, that's fine. And then for color, instead of clicking color, we're gonna go ahead and click this button here and give it an image texture. And then simply select from the drop down menu, UV test. And suddenly you, we can now see the squares in our UV grid. So now we realize that, hey, you know what? This, uh, this corresponds exactly with the size of these squares here. And of course, you'll notice that every single one of these faces is exactly the same. That's not entirely what we want. I kind of want to have unique squares for each one. So let's try to unwrap it a little bit better. I'm going to try the smart UV project to compare what this looks like compared to the typical unwrap. And I usually just use default settings. That's usually fine. And as you can see here, we have now six separate squares. So now if we drag one of these, it only affects one of them. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and have everything selected. Notice when I unselect everything, the UV map disappears. So by default, the UV map only appears when you have the vertices selected in the viewport. Now, this is very handy for if you wanted to go into, for example, face select mode and select this face. Now you know this face corresponds with this particular square in the UVs. 
And that's okay, but what if I didn't want something that looked like a stair step? What if I wanted something that looked a little bit more intuitive? Maybe something a little bit more like a cross, like you saw in the example I showed you earlier. Well, there's a few more ways you can control your unwrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into edge select mode, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select these three edges here, and then these three edges here. And then I'm gonna hit Control E for the edge menu, which then allows me to mark seam. So what is a seam in real life? Well, a seam in real life is a border. It's like an edge where two different pieces of fabric were sewn together. So in UVs, that could also mark where two different edges are sewn together after they're wrapped back up onto the object. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Mark Seam here, and that'll make these edges here a little bit more red. And then I'm gonna select this edge as well, do the same thing, Mark Seam. And then I'm gonna select everything, hit U, and then Unwrap. Instead of Smart UV Project, we're gonna hit Unwrap, and that will give us this much more intuitive UV Unwrap. So you have to understand how the seams work. I'll go ahead and walk you through my thought process here. This area here, and this area here are the arms of the cross. So I wanted to make sure that these three sides were marked as a seam. But we also needed to have the head and the tail cut apart from each other. So that's what this seam here was for. And so once you do that and you ask Blender to unravel it based on these edges being the borders of the UV map, then Blender comes up with this solution. And this solution is a little bit more intuitive because it allows for your brain to sort of wrap around how this thing actually came apart. And each one of these faces is right next to its neighbors. So you know that these two faces are next to each other. For example, this one and this one. So yeah, the basic principle of UV unwrapping is to try to make it as intuitive as possible for the texturer. Now for UV mapping, you sort of get the idea from this already. As long as you move this UV along whatever you want to have the image texture as, which in this case is our UV grid, you can basically map what part of the image will go onto which face by dragging this over the part that you want. For example, if I want this to line up perfectly, I can simply drag this and do that. And now the edges there should now be perfectly matched up. And that's because I matched them up in the UVs. And yeah, those are the basics of UV unwrapping and UV mapping in Blender.